Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to demonstrate simulation of 5 level cascaded H bridge multi level inverter using SPWM technique in MATLAB Simulink. In case you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to it so that you'll be getting the videos that we post regularly. Alright, let's get started. This is the mo MATLAB model of a multi level inverter using SPWM technique. Previously, we have developed the same circuit that is 5 level cascaded H bridge multi level inverter but using the conventional method based on the switching sequence. In case you haven't watched that video, please do watch it. It will be available in the end screen as well as the link will be provided in the description. So one of the major advantages of SPWM technique is it provides automatic control with respect to the switches in MATLAB model and it also improves the efficiency of the overall circuit. So let's look at the output waveform that is expected. So this is uh, the output waveform that we are supposed to get. So let's go to MATLAB and get this pattern of output waveform by rigging up this. Here we are in MATLAB. So click on Simulink library browser and we'll be searching for the component that we want according to our circuit diagram will be requiring a power give block so add that we also need a voltage measurement block add that as well power give block is basically acting as a compiler where the sam samples the circuit discretization uh, in continuous domain and discrete domain will be done so once this is added we will be requiring uh, a DC voltage source so search for DC voltage and uh, choose the ones that are there in black because the blue ones are used for signals and systems and uh, digital signal processing application however we can use it for power electronic applications as well but it's not that widely used so it's generally uh, black ones are used for power systems and power electronic applications and once this is done we will be requiring a MOSFET which is used as a switch we are not using thyristor because we need a commutation circuit to turn that off so we can use either IGBT or MOSFET so once that is done uh, we will be requiring a series RLC branch uh, which will basically be converted to a resistive load so add this block and uh, after adding this we will be requiring a scope in order to see the output waveform so search for scope and it will be available right at the top add this block as well so once all of these are added let's uh, get into our SPWM part of uh, the circuit we need a sine wave so search for sine wave and you'll be getting it right at the top over here so don't choose the one which is uh, uh, mentioned as sine wave function uh, we only want sine wave sinusoidal waveform so add that block and once uh, that is added we will be requiring a repeating sequence so search for repeating sequence a repeating sequence is basically uh, a triangular waveform uh, pattern uh, just like the way sawtooth waveform looks like and once this is also added we will be requiring a logical operator which is basically a not gate so search for logical operator and add that block so we will later convert it to not gate and we also need a relational operator so search for relational operator and you'll be getting it right at the top uh, apart from that uh, one of the most important blocks that we want is the gain block I'll tell you the reason why we need this with respect to our circuit so add this block as well so once all of these are added let's uh, start placing them in appropriate position so that uh, we can get started uh, uh, with respect to the entire uh, circuit diagram so uh, the scope is generally placed at the output end the load is also placed at the output end MOSFET is placed here and uh, the DC voltage source the voltage should be measured at the output terminals and this is the power gear block let us first rotate the MOSFET by pressing on control R double click on it and disable the measurement port because we don't want that so copy paste this uh, another uh, couple of times so so that we get a H bridge uh, form of a structure and uh, let us place one underneath the other in this particular fashion so once this is done we will be requiring another four switches so control C and control V so we'll be connecting it right uh, below that and we also need another DC voltage source underneath this so let us first connect the circuit diagram drain to source should be connected here and drain to drain should be shorted and uh, the supply should be given to this point source and source should be shorted and the DC voltage source should be connected to this point again drain and drain should be shorted source and drain to be connected source and drain and source and source should be shorted DC voltage source will be given between these two points so once this is done so observe carefully uh, rotate the resistor uh, rotate this and we'll change it to a resistor I'll be choosing um, it, uh, its value to be equal to 100 for convenience you can choose any other values based on your requirement so click on ok once so once this is done let us connect uh, the resistor load between these two points uh, over here and we need to cascade these two terminals so press control uh, and then get the point where you want to connect it to so 
it is now cascaded they're connected in series so once that is done i'll be connecting the voltage at this point and this point to measure the output voltage and i'll be giving it to the scope so i'll be uh, having a supply voltage of 5 volt so you can do it for 100 volt as well so when you are giving 5 volt the level should be 0 5 10 minus 5 and minus 10 um, so based on that you have to get the output so this is the part with respect to the cascaded h bridge configuration multi-level configuration now let us carefully look at the objective with respect to the spwm technique how do we trigger them if you observe the previous circuit with respect to the same circuit the pattern of switching them was very high and you had to uh, do a lot of things with respect to the circuit configurations but here it's quite simple and the logic is also quite simple so the sine wave that is chosen the amplitude uh, let me say it is equal to 3 just to properly see the waveform let me choose the frequency to be equal to 314.15 because it is um, uh, with respect to uh, radians per second so 2 pi into f 50 hertz is the frequency that we have considered click on ok once that is done now carefully observe this point so 0 I'll be entering 0.5 and I'll be entering 1 divided by 1000 and again over here what I'll be doing is 0 I'll be entering 1 and I'll be entering 0 why is this so a lot of questions a lot of people will be having doubts with respect to this why is it in this particular fashion so observe the cursor moment so it's basically a triangular waveform as I mentioned earlier let us say it is started at 0 it goes to a higher value and comes back to zero this is how triangular waveform looks like isn't it so now it starts from zero that means amplitude is zero goes to higher value let us assume the higher value to be equal to one and comes back to zero so zero one zero again it starts from zero with respect to time value that is uh, x-axis so carefully observe it goes to a higher value at higher value uh, the maximum time is nothing but t by 2 if the total time is t at this point then the half of the time will be t by 2 so 0.5 and then 1 so so divided by 1000 just to convert it from milli into the desired value in this case. So click on OK. Once this is done, let us compare these two using this block and we will be giving it to a NOT gate as well. So double click on the logical operator and convert it to NOT gate. So click on OK once that is done. Connect it in this particular fashion. One important thing to remember now. So the first leg is basically for the positive. Uh, halves of the cycle like you have to get the positive steps so that is where first and second leg uh, first leg for both the circuits are used second leg for both the circuits are for negative duration so this is for positive isn't it so i'll be giving it to not gate is given to this point and i'll be taking the tapping directly from this point over here so press control and take the tapping and i'll be giving it to this switch so once this is done we need another repeating sequence for the negative cycle so carefully observe uh, the circuit uh, now what i'll be doing is first level is with respect to the same time values will remain the same output values will change because we have got for the first level now we have to go for the second level that is from the previous level to the next level so from the previous level in the sense it should start from one value higher than the previous one so zero uh, so one two and one so that is where you'll be getting the next level from 5 to 10 volt positive step so that is why we need to do this and once that is done i'll be connecting it to this point again i'll be taking the tapping from the sinusoidal waveform over here and uh, i'll be giving it through a not gate so in this particular fashion and i'll be giving it to this so i hope the concept is understood so be very careful while connecting it if you go wrong here uh, you will not get the right output so be very careful with respect to it so now let us double click on this uh, and change the gain to minus one so you might have a doubt why it is required so the reason is very simple sinusoidal signal with respect to the positive half is compared with the uh, saw sawtooth waveforms like for the positive cycle the values of sawtooth is generated but now we have to check it for the negative we have to get negative steps as well so we'll be multiplying it with minus one and we'll be using a sawtooth generator just like this this repeating sequence block again and we'll be giving it to the other uh, second legs of both the circuits here so what we will be doing we have taken the negative again we will be using the same repeating sequence so we need it again so control c control v over here and uh, we need a logical operator as well so relational operator here so compare this and we need a logical operator again so control c control v over here and we'll be connecting at this point and i'll be giving it to this one i'll be taking a tapping from this point and i'll be giving it to this one
so once this is done we need one more uh, pattern of switching this that is with respect to uh, this repeating sequence so control c control v and i'll be placing it at this uh, point or uh, i can place this at this point as well so repeating sequence and we need the sinusoidal waveform so we need a logical operator and relational operator again copy paste this copy paste the not gate as well so once this is done now we will be comparing again with respect to this signal that we have got so take the tapping from this point and compare it at this point and let it be directly connected here give it to a not gate not gate tapping should be given to this point and from the uh, value before the not gate connect it to this gate terminal so this is how we will be connecting the circuit using spwm technique so let me set the simulation time to one second because these are static loads so now let me click on run now in order to see the waveform let us double click on the scope so we will be able to see the uh, nature of the output waveform by double clicking on the scope so this is the output waveform that we are supposed to get and we are exactly getting it let us zoom in uh, the, this particular portion to see the steps clearly so let us zoom in again so if you see it's going at 5 volt again second step is 10 coming back at minus 5 and again coming back at minus 10 if you change the supply to 100 this it should be the in this particular pattern 0 100 200 comes back to minus it comes back to 0 goes to minus 100 minus 200 comes back to minus 100 and then comes back to 0 so this is how we have supposed to get for a supply of 100 volt but this waveform is with respect to 5 volt so you can try it for 100 volt as well so we are getting exactly the waveform that we are supposed to get with respect to this circuit i hope you were able to simulate this circuit so you can try this and explore with respect to seven level multi-level inverters as well you'll be able to do it by cascading another block in series with this i hope uh, this video was helpful in case you like this video please like it share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates thanks for watching this video please to keep supporting thank you